One of the most important features to understand with respect to libraries is versioning. Now site owners turn on this feature and site owners determine how many versions of any given file may be saved. Do we keep 10 versions, 15, 20 versions, and so on. Uh, obviously a hard drive space becomes a concern after a while. But we do need to understand how to help individuals who fear that important changes may have been overwritten and who don't even know that versioning is available to them. So before I get anybody's hopes up, I do want to look to make sure there is some version history. You should certainly see how that works. What I've observed is that in the later versions of the online version of SharePoint, they don't even have no versioning as an option anymore. That used to be an option. Um, and some of the later versions, I've just seen no version not there, which means everything's got versioning turned on. I thought that was a little bit presumptuous on their part, but nonetheless, when you're trying to help a colleague who fears something is gone, um, that's actually a little inspiring. So here's how it looks, works. I have an Excel file over here, Aeromar sales, and there's some pivot table data in here. The contents of the pivot table are of little interest. What's most important is how to get to versioning information. There was a time when I could have clicked over here on the information icon, the details pane would have opened up and offered me that, but as I've experimented with this over time, it sometimes is there and sometimes it's not. So what we're gonna do is the tried and true way. We're gonna click this ellipsis button, the button with the three dots, and we'll find version history this way. The other way would have been more convenient. Here, there's a lot in here, but we'll pick version history. At least we know this is going to work. Right away, we can see one, two, three, four versions of this file. Looks like two of them around the same time, probably very small changes. But what if someone were to decide that version two is the necessary one? Hmm. Well, over here, I have options. I can delete older versions, recover some drive space, or I can restore. Now, one of the things that concerns individuals who are learning by experimentation, they're wondering if they restore something, will they somehow obliterate the one that is the current version? The answer is no. What happens is the one that you're about to restore goes to the top of the list with a new version number. And so right now we're showing four versions. When I restore, Yes, we know. And when this works properly, notice how it is now version 5. Essentially, 2 and 5 are the same version. You know, if we were to open them up, compare them side by side, they would be identical. I've just made a copy of 2, pushed it up into this slot over here, so that when somebody comes over here and clicks the file just to open it, that now becomes the supposed current version, right? And it actually is the current version. We'll take a, give this a few seconds to see what's in here. It's gonna be some sort of a pivot table because its name says that. But whatever finally appears, here we are. We know where we found it. We know how it got here. So, like I said when we started this, let me just close this. It looks like this loaded locally. Get rid of all that. There we are. Being able to get to a previous version, not that difficult. It's foolproof, right? You never over overwrite the one that's at the very top of the order. That one just kind of nudges down a number. A new one really goes right up and over the top. All that work is preserved. And hopefully when you're trying to help out friends who fear that something has been lost, this is really the way to go about helping them out. We hope this video helped. Make sure to click the thumbs up and click the subscribe button right here. And click the link above to check out our Limelight classes, a free virtual live training. See you in the next video.